Hey there guys, welcome back, Ricky here. Okay, so I've just finished sharpening on both of these stones, the Chosera, 90 watt Chosera 800, and the King 1000 Deluxe, or the King Deluxe 1000, wherever you want to say it. This is the KDS, uh, which is using the same exact uh, 1000 as the KDS, uh, as the 1000 Deluxe, and the same as the 6000 S1, 2, and 3, just different dimensions, okay? So, man, today was a really uh, was was a really good day, and I really got to see how good both of these stones are, especially how good the king feels. And um, you know, when you when you sharpen the stone by itself, you know it feels good. And when you know when you go back and forth in different days, uh, you, you know you do get a sense of how good the stone feels. But when you sharpen two stones side by side, and they're two very different stones you really get to appreciate the other stone. And uh, I only had one knife today, which really wasn't a problem because I didn't have to do, you know, today, uh, you know, to me when I, a cut test was only for fun, all the other videos, you know, to show you guys how well they cut and to compare the cuts. But at this point, you know that they're sharp. Uh, you know that the knives will be sharp coming from these stones. And it's really all about how they feel, how well they cut, um, how, cut the, how well they cut the knife. How fast they can cut the knives and um, really just their tactile feedback and hand feel those are the things that I really want on, on a stone because I know that with time with focus concentration I can get any knife sharp okay so we're just gonna start with the Chosera and we go towards the King afterwards and uh, these are these are gonna be short because you've seen have you seen all the other videos on the Chosera's and the Kings Really, no, a whole lot has changed. Okay, just I'll add some things that I notice about them uh, that you guys might want to know. But the Trocera, again, uh, this is, I don't know, probably my fifth or sixth time using it. And it is just a wonderful, wonderful stone. And uh, the more I use it, the more I'm comfortable with it. And it's just such a, a such a positive, uh, you know, re, uh, responsive great feeling stone there's nothing bad to say about this stone um you know I, I can sit here and try to find something negative to say about it but i really can't the only one thing that is negative not inherently in the stone is the price and that's just the manufacturer's um just you know, decision to price the stone at a very very high price and uh, these stones again they can range from 70 bucks upwards of 170 an hour I think I see, I've seen them as high as 100, 170 and uh, you know so they're a little on the pricey side but again the comparison today is not about price it's really about performance so I just want to bring the price because I couldn't find anything negative to say about this stone it doesn't load up at all I mean this is after every sharpening this is what the stone looks like with just my hands you know rubbing the uh, the surface of the stone and you see you do see a little bit of discoloration and uh, my guess is it's because the this you know this is where a lot of the sharpening is happening so the steel is pulling off uh you know layers of the stone and so this here is a stone that has a little bit of water on it and so that's why you don't see uh, any uh, darkness in this area so that's really about it but uh, tactile feedback it's uh, you know it's very responsive you know exactly what the knife is doing you're very confident on this stone the uh, hand feel, you know, it's again, it's it's very comfortable to sharpen on. It's not as comfortable as, let's say, the the Naniwa Superstone, right? But again, we're not talking comfort. As, sorry, again, my guard dog, German Shepherd, that barks only at squirrels, nothing else. It's getting chilly here. I'm putting on my sweater. Um. Okay, all right, that's a little better. Hi, you barking at squirrels again? Yeah, okay, good girl. Okay, so as I was saying, this, you know, the, the tactile feedback, I mean, you are, this, you know exactly what the knife is doing. That's the beautiful thing about this stone. And today, one thing I noticed differently about today, today's shopping in general, not with just the Chaucera, but with both the King and the Chaucera, both of these stones felt so much more lively today, okay? And I think it's because, and I know it's because I was, I was sharpening on my KS. Um, 
Sorry, folks. Uh, she's never barked this much before. There's a, a squirrel that's taunting her outside, but I'll let her be. Um, but the KS is such a good knife, and it really brought, I mean, I, I want to say it brought the best out of these stones. Uh, so, you know, for those who are sharpening on a, you know, if you guys have a $50, $60 knife, it's, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with an affordable knife. You know, the, the Juros, they've worked really, really well. They're both, you know, they're very affordable knives. And I bought them for this very purpose, so they can sharpen and not feel so guilty sharpening a knife. Because today, as you guys notice, when I, when every time I ran this knife on a break, I just, my heart just broke more, you know, per every stroke. So, but, you know, sharpening on, on, on this knife, with this knife, it just made the stones feel so good. And that's something you guys, you know, should consider in the future. If you guys have the budget for, you know, a $150 knife or $200 Japanese knife, uh, really, that 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 number will give you a really a really nice knife. I think anywhere above that 350 mark, you're kind of just spending money because you can. Um, I have found that in the 250 to 350 range or 250 to 300 dollar range is like that sweet spot where you get the best performance for your dollar, and you're getting the best quality knife. Okay, so. Um, but yeah, this I love this knife. I will never get rid of it. It's, this knife I'll keep for a very long time. Okay, so that's the Chosera. I mean, it, there's, again, there's nothing bad to say about this stone. Uh, this and the Super Stone really are the first, I'll say this as a, um, I will admit, I now really appreciate Splash and Go stones, okay? Before this point, uh, I never thought that I liked the way they felt as much as those Soaking Stone. But after using these stones for the last month or so, I really have come to appreciate soaking, uh, wet splash and go stones. And I still love my wet stones, my soaking stones, but I, I do enjoy the splash and goes at this point. Not all, but uh, especially the Tracera and the Super Stones, okay? All right, so now to the king. Now the king. Something I felt today uh, that I never felt before, I, I didn't think I was going to say this. It is a very positive feeling stone, okay? My thoughts going into this challenge today was I thought that this would have the same problem the Cerax did. Okay, I thought that this was going to feel muted relative to the Trocera and it did not. Okay, so it could be the knife. Yeah, you know, the fact that I'm sharpening on a very, very different knife than the Tergeros. But I suspect that this stone, and I'll do a quick, a really quick comparison uh, towards towards the Cerax really quickly. The Cerax, I think, felt muted relative to this stone because I think it is a 2000 grit stone. Okay, so because, in my opinion, it felt more like a 2000 grit stone, it had a little bit more of that muted feel because it had a slight polishing effect to it. And the reason this stone did not have that muted feel is because it is a true 1000 grit stone and it is purely a sharpening stone. So all it did was sharpen the knife, not polished it. And I can tell looking at this and I'll post, fo uh, I'll post vo photos at the very end of this video, you'll see that this has virtually no polishing effect at all. It's a very, it's, it's very satin, uh, very, you can see very, very, very fine scratch marks within the uh, within the the surface of the of the knife. There is no spots on this on this knife. Uh, I you know I finished this uh, after the Chosera, so there is no spots on this knife where you see any sort of mirror polish on it. And so because of that, this stone felt actually more lively than the Cerex One Thousand. Okay, I'm not talking about hardness. That's a whole different story now. I'm talking about lively with uh, with feedback and tactile feel at this point. It felt more lively than the Cerax. Did it feel more lively than the Chosera? Uh, it did not. Okay, it did not feel as lively as the Chosera. Uh, mainly because the Chosera is a much harder stone. And remember in the sharpening portion of this king, I said that I've noticed that as I was pulling the knife uh, you know, up and down the stone, especially when I went towards towards me, I was looking down and I actually saw kind of a little buffer zone that would move with the bottom edge of this knife. And um, 
And that is partly uh, due to the fact that this stone is slightly softer. And so it allowed, so, uh, you know, it was actually, I was actually moving water uh, throughout, throughout the stone with pressure of the knife in my hands. So that's something that was just interesting. You know, I don't think that affected the performance of this, of this stone at all. It's just something that I just noticed for the first time today. 30 minutes soaking time is pretty close to optimal. I would say another 10 minutes would really make the stone shine. And, uh, you know, so it's a really good stone. So hand, I mean, it felt really good. This stone just, I felt, you know, I don't, I, I think with anyone, if you sharpen on this stone, um, you would feel just so, so much at home with this stone. There's something very nostalgic. There's something very special about the King 1000 stone. And it could be my preference because I actually, you know, 10 years ago, this was a stone that I used for, um, that I used for a couple of years. And, you know, so it brought back maybe a lot of memories, but it's just, you know, with that aside, it's just a very good stone. It's just a very good cutting, uh, very consistent stone, you know, with all the other stones that I've used, I knew that this stone was just going to perform really well. And it wasn't the fastest cutting stone. It wasn't the slowest cutting stone. Uh, it wasn't the most aggressive cutting stone. It wasn't the most muted stone. It was just a very good stone. And again, this has been the standard for a 1000 grit stone. So, you know, if you're going to compare 1000 grit stones, this has been that stone. And after using it these last, this, this series, it's just an incredible, incredible stone. And, you know, I, I have to, I really have to bring up price again, because it just, you, you, you can't ignore that with this stone. And for a company, uh, you know, to put a stone that cuts so well, uh, that really has has uh, passed the test of time. Uh, you know, for a stone that costs thirty thirty five dollars for the deluxe version by itself, the single one thousand deluxe version by itself, that's just an incredible feat. I mean, you know, the next closest stone in performance and price, you're probably looking at the Rush Yama one thousand, which is a fifty to five fifty fifty five dollar stone. The Besser 1200, which is a $55, $58 stone. The Cirax uh, 1000, which is a $55 stone. You know, all these other stones are almost twice the price, or quite literally twice the price, for, for really the same performance. You know, they've, they've changed a few things. You know, some of the other stones are, 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 are splash and goes, or they cut a little bit faster, or they have a slightly better polishing effect. But in terms of a kind of an all-around good stone, I don't... Uh, there is no other stone that can do it for 35, you know, 35 or at the high end, $40, you know. Uh, so it's just an incredible stone. And uh, there's no need to do a, a, a cut test because you guys know that these are going to cut really well. And uh, and I, if you guys want to see the cut test, just watch the sharpening videos. I'll post them uh, to the links below. Uh, the Trocera, Trocera sharpening video I'll put in this side and then the King sharpening video I'll put in this side so you can watch them and see the cut at the end they both cut really well and but now I have to pick a winner so I will pick a winner and let me discuss the points of why I did it and uh, for me if I were to choose a stone that I would want to use every single day or on a weekly basis I would choose you know money aside just raw performance the Tresero wins okay but you guys have to remember this is this is just talking about pure performance at this point. Uh, there's nothing that is really lacking in the King, but in terms of raw performance, you know, uh, cut speed, aggressive tactile feedback, uh, hand feel, this stone just really just, it is just that much a little, you know, that much better than the King uh, in, in those categories. Very, but it's just, it's just better. It's not like, oh, a world, you know, a world of difference between the two stones because it's not, it's just better. It's just a little bit better. And so in cut speed, you know, we had five, uh, sorry, three passes on, on this side, on this first side, five passes on this side, uh, hand feel, you know, and feedback. So again, this stone does not feel muted. And that's the thing. That's one thing that I really want to stress is it does not feel muted relative to the Trocera. It just wasn't as positive, just wasn't as aggressive. And Roxy, come here. Sorry. Uh, it just, 
you know, even though it was not muted, it just wasn't as aggressive. Uh, but it did feel really positive, just not as positive as this guy here. So, you know, uh, if, if this was the perfect stone, let's say this is a, you know, a scale one to 10, if this was a 10, this was a nine in tactile feedback and hand feel and a seven for speed. Okay, that's how good this stone is. And I just want to stress that. And so instead of just picking a winner and telling you that this is a winner, and it is, it is the better stone, okay? This stone barely, it barely missed the mark. And, um, and for, it really just set the mark. This stone just surpassed it, okay? So now we really have to talk about price, okay? Dollar per dollar, this is the better stone. Just like the Cyrex was a better stone. And that brings me to the next thing that I want to think about is I think the next video should be the Cyrax 1000 versus the King because I've not done a side-by-side -side comparison with the, those two stones yet and I think that um, I think that these two stones would really be the main choice for 90% 90, 90 of the people out there you know, those who don't want to spend 70, 80 bucks on a stone, uh, and you just want a stone that does everything really, really well for, you know, let's say top out, top end, $55, under $55, or under 60 bucks, you know, let's say that. Um, it's going to be these two stones. It's going to be between one of these two stones. Now, here's something to, for you to think about, and I might be jumping ahead at this point, but... Uh, you know, you can buy the single edition stone, the Deluxe 1000 by itself, that will roughly be this size, maybe a little bigger, for 30, 35 bucks. Uh, and, or you can buy the Cyrex for, let's say, 50, let's say 50 bucks, okay? And so then there's a price difference there. Uh, but if you go with the KDS model, which I think is a much better value, it's, uh, it's a $60 stone retail. And... Um, you get a really nice 1000 grit stone that will last you, I think this will last you a long time. If you're only shopping your knife once a week or once every couple weeks, this will be a 10 year, uh, at least a, ten, a stone that will last you 10 years or so. And the 6000 side will last you a very long time as well. Uh, it's, it's a bit harder than the uh, 1000 side, so this should last you quite a bit, quite a long time. So, anyways, we'll go. We'll talk about that at some point. But maybe the next video. I think. I think this. These two stones would be a very good challenge. Would be probably something that you guys would want to consider, um, if you guys didn't want to spend the money on the Trocera. But uh, yeah, I think that that brings it to a conclusion. The Trocera is the best sharpening stone uh, under that. Let's say the, yeah, the thousand grit sharpening stone. And this is the Trocera 800. Uh, you know, I decided to go with the 800 because I've I've talked to many very uh, reputable people and very knowledgeable people that they they said that the 800 will be closer to the 1000 grit stone instead of the 1000 grit stone. And based on the the, res the results that I've seen, this is much closer to a 1000 grit stone than an 800 grit stone. Um, I think it's somewhere between the 1000 to 1500 grit stone. Uh, probably 1200 would be a very safe number for this for this guy and this is you know a t this is a 2000 grit stone and that's part that's part of partly why I felt a little bit muted compared to this guy here uh, this guy is the 1000 grit stone and it still is the king it's still an amazing stone and uh, you will not be disappointed with the KDS or with the king 1000 but for those who are looking for absolute performance and money being aside the Chosera by Naniwa is the best cutting stone that I have used. Um, okay, so on that note, thank you for watching and thank you for being with me uh, this far. And uh, this is not the end yet. We still have this comparison I want to do. I won't do it today uh, because I'm running out of time. And uh, I, I only have about an hour, an hour and a half uh, to actually shoot a video a day. Then I've got to spend the rest of the afternoon editing it and and then after this, we have the polishing stone, polishing stones challenge. Uh, that will be a lot of fun. So stick around for that. Uh, it'll be just as exciting and just as um, fun uh, and informative as the sharpening series. I think even more so because 
Now I have to develop a different way of sharpening these knives because they're polishing stones. So I have to decide how we're going to sharpen them and then how we're going to polish them. And that will be, you know, it'll be a little bit more involved than just sharpening on the 1000 grit stones. So stick around for that. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you guys have not done so already. It will be a very uh, big thank you to me and uh, very much, I, I very much appreciate it if you guys did that. And again, I'm just having a lot of fun here and hopefully showing you guys some information that you guys have been searching for. Um, I've gotten some very positive feedback from people and I deeply appreci appreciate all of your comments and I respond to every one of them when I can. And um, yeah, thank you guys for being with me so far and I look forward to catching up with you guys in the next series and the next video. All right, see you around.